Good evening, and welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church, our Wednesday evening Eucharist service. Today is Wednesday, May 26, 2021. We're very glad that you could join us this evening. A couple of announcements. Uh, the bishop will be here on June the 6th, week from Sunday. Uh, he'll be celebrating at both services and he will do confirmations and the baptism. And then following the 11 o'clock service, he will dedicate the new Petroselli walkway, which will be completed by then. We're very excited about that. Um, the plaque came today commemorating the walkway and uh, we can't wait to get it installed. There'll also be a box lunch following the dedication if anyone is interested in that, you should have an email with a sign-up. Uh, the church is covering the cost of the lunch, so don't worry about that. You have three options for sandwiches. We hope you'll be able to join us on that exciting day. Again, that's June the 6th, week from Sunday. That will begin. Holy Eucharist, right to begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from You no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect of the day is for the day of Pentecost can be found on page 227 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the psalm. The psalm appointed for this evening is 119, verses 25 through 48, and it can be found beginning on page 765 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 119, verses 25 through 48 beginning on 765. We'll read together. My soul cleaves to the dust. Give me life according to your word. I have confessed my ways, and you answered me. Instruct me in your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, that I may meditate on your marvelous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take from me the way of lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments, for you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread. 
because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taunt me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments and I will meditate on your statutes. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, and verses 11 through 32. Luke 15, 1 and 2, and 11 through 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. and The Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you were always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what is grace? Grace is that word we use to name the truth that God loves us and stays in relationship with us in spite of our flaws, our failures, our brokenness, our misdeeds, 
our misgivings or anything else. God makes relationship with us even when we try to cut it off. But the truth is that all of us do any number of things that try, intentionally or not, to separate ourselves from God's love. We wander a long road to a far-off country, far from the fullness of who we are as God intends us to be. Sometimes our wanderings take us towards sin or moral wrongs in which we are the perpetrators, hatred, violence, prejudice. Other times our wanderings take us where things happen to us as victims, addiction, self-doubt, self-loathing. On the other hand, we might think of ourselves as generally good people, upstanding citizens, people who live wholesomely, kind to our neighbor and strangers alike, dutiful, maybe sometimes even a little self-righteous. Jesus' parable in today's gospel says a lot about who we are and how far we have sometimes fallen, even to the point of degrading ourselves. The parable says a lot about the grudges we bear and how they poison our relationships. The parable says a lot about our potential to be generous, forgiving, and loving. But it says much more about God and God's passionate desire to forgive us, embrace us, and welcome us home. That's where grace gets us. Grace means that God loves us and welcomes us, not because we are good, but because God is good. Are you familiar with Anne Lamott? In her book, Traveling Mercy, she shares her journey toward faith in Jesus Christ. Broke, drunk, bulimic, depressed, and addicted to drugs, she, quote, could no longer imagine how God could love her. In desperation, she made an appointment with, of all people, an Episcopal priest. I'm so messed up that I don't think God can love me, she told him. God has to love you, he replied. That's God's job. While he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. No place is too far off, and God's eyes are never too dim to see when we are the object of the search. For the God portrayed in the parable is not a jealous, vengeful, angry God, but a generous, forgiving and loving God. The God of the parable is a God who is prepared to spend an eternity scanning the horizon, waiting for us to come to our senses and return. The God of the parable is a God who is prepared to wash us clean and vest us with dignity. The God of the parable is a God who is prepared to forget all that has passed and place on our finger a sign of covenanted love and betrothal. The God of the parable is a God who is prepared to celebrate and dance the night away in joy for our return. What has been your own experience of being lost? Times in your life when you made a choice that took you into a far country, far from God. Times when you went astray, when you took a path which did not lead to life. Perhaps you feel lost right now. I believe it's precisely at these times that God draws especially close to us, longing to rescue us, throw his arms around us and bring us home. It's okay to be lost, to acknowledge our sins, our wrong choices. Because unless you've been lost, you can't really be found. When did God find you? You may have experienced one particular moment in your life, a conversion experience or a moment of revelation, a 
a sense of being rescued, of being loved, of being forgiven. Perhaps you have many experiences of being found by God. Perhaps if you're like me, you're always straying off the path. Instead of being angry, I think God delights in seeking us out and finding us and bringing us safely home. When God finds us, there is always a celebration. This evening in this Eucharist, we're gathered to celebrate God finding us in Jesus Christ. If you're feeling lost right now, when you receive Jesus in bread and wine, not so much wine right now, ask to be found. If you know what it is to have been found by God when you come to receive Jesus in the bread, give thanks. Thanks to the one who came looking for you and found you. Time to discover once again who God is and how very much God loves us. So no matter where you find yourself today, remember there's a robe of dignity, a ring of covenanted love, and a feast awaiting you in the heart of God. whose love will never let you go. All you have to do is take the first small step in the journey home. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the people, form three, which can be found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Form three, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your petitions and thanksgivings silently or aloud. Lift up Amy, Shane, Mark, people of St. Peter's. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continue with the confession, which can be found on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to greet one another in peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, which can be found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your journey of faith, know that you are welcome at Christ's table. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Continue with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.